Are you a teacher by heart? Young person, would you like to follow teaching as a profession? Or parents, is your child going to become a teacher? Does he like or he or she like to teach? Let's find out more. Keep watching this video till the end and we'll discuss some charts in the brief amount of time we have. So that you can check your birth charts and the hints that astrology provides from this point. Of course, any man can become anything in profession, but we are just looking at it from an astrological point. And how we can make good teachers. What birth charts show that a person can become a good teacher? A good one. We have all had good and bad teachers, but we are looking at the ones whose heart is in teaching. Okay. So the first some considerations that I'm using. Ascendant Zodiac Nakshatra always is following your bliss in professional life. Jupiter, Saturn, Mercury and Venus are the drivers for being teachers. Combined with that, Uranus, the higher mind, and Neptune, the higher heart, I'm going to be using as the higher calling or the refinement of lower self. We've got to refine the lower self in order to make better um, professionals at whatever we are doing. <coughs> it's about who makes a good teacher at heart, not just on the profession. We have all seen this. Each one of us has seen this who are being educated. We have seen good and bad teachers. Well, the person is not good or bad. It's just that is their heart in it or are they just using it as a profession? Just another profession will not cut it. Okay, we are trying to get past just getting a job and paying the bills here. So there are a total of 13 can driver of being a teacher in Punarvasu. Punarvasu is being guided by Jupiter, Mercury in that, in the third house of skills, communication, because teachers need to be able to communicate Mercury is exalted here. So this will make a very good communicator of any profession. So teaching requires a lot of communication, right? So watch the Mercury in every slide. And then the Jupiter, Jupiter in Pushya. Jupiter is exalted in the fourth house and Pushya, it becomes a guru, it becomes a teacher. It becomes someone who brings nurturing energy to teaching. Then we have uh, Neptune in Puro Falguni. Puro Falguni is guided by Venus. Neptune is the higher heart in the house of education. So what happens to such people is they recalibrate or they're always looking to push themselves up in the realm of compassion, in the help, realm of nurturing. They like to nurture things and they view education, fifth house, and creativity is very high in this person <coughs> because they are being ruled by Neptune there in Purva Falguni, not in Maga. Next, the sixth house of daily work, you have Uranus in Hasta. Uranus being the higher mind, Hasta being what is done with the hands, okay? What profession requires a def dexterity of hands, use of hands. Now, what do I mean by higher mind in the hands well teachers in private nursery school primary school need to know how to what works best for the child so this would work best for them this arrangement of using the higher mind when dealing with children and in sixth house being of daily work they would be doing something drawn to their individuality in this uranus is about individuation Next, the 10th house of career has Saturn in Shravana Nakshatra. Now, Shravana Nakshatra is also drawn towards teaching. And the 10th house is, I mean, the house of career, Saturn will have these people work, daily work. Okay? And they'll bring the Uranus mind into it. Beautiful. Next, the Venus is in 12th house of Uttra Bhadrapada Nakshatra. So that's also a teacher like we'll see later when it comes in ascendant. Venus in the 12th house is exalted in number 12 in the sign of Pisces. So it becomes very devoted. It's very devotional. Venus, the higher form of sensuality is devotion. Sorry, I'm having coffee here. So that's what it becomes here. So this is the first of them. Second of them, um, 
let's take Taurus ascendant with ascendant pointing at Kritika nakshatra. Kritika is ruled by the sun. These people make good lecturers and professors in university. Now you're going at a higher level. In a leading position. Why? Because the sun wants recognition. Sun wants fame. Sun wants leadership. So Kritika being ruled by sun ascendant pointing towards that. They'll be looking to have leadership in positions wherever they are. So professors in university, deans in university, lecturers, they will all be doing good with this kind of a thing. Their heart will be in it. In the second house of speech and learning, early learning, they have Jupiter in Punarvasa. Punarvasa is already ruled by Jupiter. So this makes a very good combination in the house of Mercury. So they'll be good communicators and with a higher wisdom. <clears throat> uh, in the fourth house you have Uranus in Magha. Magha wants to go in in the sign of sun. Because Kritika is already ruled by sun, Uranus and Magha will give them access to their ancestral legacy. You gotta understand sun is about ancestral legacy. Okay, what your what energy your ancestors bring. Now for the Taurus Ascendant, Leo being in the 5th house, it becomes very important, Uranus here. Of course, they will have a very unconventional home front, but that doesn't matter. We are right now talking about who will make good professors and lecturers in universities. In the 5th house, they have Saturn in Hasta with the house of education. So they will be very diligent. Saturn brings diligence in daily work very strongly wherever it sits. Saturn in Hasta will make them very good with their abilities of teaching with their hands, whatever it is, giving presentations. These days it comes down to giving presentations, not just doing it with a chalk on a blackboard. In the seventh house, Venus in Swati gives them individuality in communicating. Swati is a very individualistic sign. Venus gives that individuality in their daily work. And in a softer manner, okay, Venus brings softness, not the harshness of Saturn. In the 10th house, you have Mercury in Shravana, which will again do very well in terms of giving out the teaching that this Guru can bring, uh, Jupiter in 2nd house can bring. In the 11th house, we have Pisces, we have Neptune. In Uttar Bhadrapada, our 11th house is for social networks, broader community. So these people will be wanting to have a higher meaning in the community that they are going to teach. So that's why university, at a university level, lecturers, professors meet all kinds of students from all over the place. So they need to have a broad mentality. They don't, they cannot do very well with having a narrow-minded or a dogmatic approach to even teaching. So Neptune in Uttarabhadapada bring the very high recalibration of heart into the community. So they will be heart-based teachers. This will make an excellent combination. Next comes Gemini Ascendant by Ascendant pointing to the Mrikshira Nakshatra. Now Mrikshira is, as you know, it comes in the sign of Gemini. So it will bring mind into the picture. These people make primary and good middle school teachers, the earlier education. With moon being in Pushya, which is very exalted in the second house, very emotional people. Because in the early stages of human life, you need tenderness, you need nurturing, you need support. You can't have a Saturnian or um, Jupiterian approach to teaching little kids. In the third house, if we have Neptune in Pura Falguni, Again, Neptune in Pura Falguni in education line becomes very, very heart-centered. A heart-centered educator or a teacher. And it's in the house of skills. So these people will have higher recognition of what it means to be talented. What it means to be talented. Because third house is the house of skills. They can be good in recognizing the skills of others. This is very good for teaching the kids. In the fourth house, we have Jupiter in Hasta, again, which brings dexterity, 
higher learning in the realm of using hands to teach. They can make excellent presentations. In fifth house, in the house of Swati, in the house of uh, Libra, fifth house of education we have, Venus in Swati again gives individuality with sensuality. This is very important because this is going to work with that Neptune energy. Venus always works with the Neptune energy wherever it sits. Uranus is sitting in Jeshtha which wants to dominate and Uranus is an um, area of individuality. So these kind of school teachers will bring a lot of individuality into their work, daily work. They will find innovative ways to get across in their daily work, innovative ways to teach. Mercury in Shravana will make them good communicators, being in the 12th house of Jupiter. As you can see, Mercury and Jupiter are having what is called as a Parivartan Yoga, means Jupiter is sitting in the house of Mercury, Mercury is sitting in the house of Jupiter, so this makes them excellent educators. Okay, so that's Gemini Ascendant 1. Gemini Ascendant 2, with now Ascendant pointing towards Punarvasu. And we are stuck in Guru in, Guru or Jupiter in the first house. So this, as it is, makes them natural educators. When Guru, is, Guru starts being present in the first house, these people bring a lot of wisdom from past life. So these people, being in the house of Mercury and being in the nakshatra of Jupiter, they have brought a lot of wisdom from past life. All wisdom cannot be gathered in one life, as you know. Again, we have got Neptune in the second house of speech in Pushya Nakshatra, one who wants to nurture. These people make good teachers, lecturers and professors again. Sun in Maga wants to keep the tradition alive. Sun is a very traditional guy. So Sun wants to keep the legacy alive, the ancestral energy. And Maga is all about ancestral energy. So Sun being there is very exalted in the third house of skills. It's, it wants to bring in lost skills. Okay. So, and in fifth house, we have Venus in Swati. Now, the Venus in Swati, again, will bring a lot of beauty, a lot of tenderness, a lot of artistic tendency to education. That's what's required. That's what's missing. Education has become a very dry place now. And then in the eleventh house, which is the house of higher education, we have Saturn in Shravanam, which makes them get all the knowledge the legacy knowledge from the fifth and recalibrate it to higher wisdom. In the tenth house, we have again Mercury. Okay, again Mercury and Jupiter are in a Parivartan Yoga, meaning Mercury is sitting in the house of Jupiter, Jupiter is sitting in the house of Mercury. So this again makes an excellent teacher combination anytime. Now we'll discuss Cancer Ascendant with the Ascendant pointing to Ashlesha and Moon being present in the house of Moon, so in Pushya, Moon in Pushya, Ascendant in Ashlesha. This combination becomes very powerful for the person feeling everything to nurture and yet using the cleverness and the ancestral energy of Ashlesha to bring it forward in their life, in all areas of their life, because it's in the Ascendant. Now what kind of teachers are we talking about for Cancer Ascendant? It's the physical teachers, like teachers of Yoga, Tai Chi, Qigong, etc, etc. The physical teachers, physical teachers meaning teachers of all physical but yet refined arts, like meditative arts, like yoga, tai chi, and qigong, which is very popular these days. So cancer ascendant makes good because it has got a natural affinity towards nurturing. It requires nurturing. But let's see, if you say physical, then Mars comes in because Mars is very physical. In the third house in Chitra, they become very creative, okay? Creative and active in the hands of third house, which is all about hands and physical body. Uranus in Hasta gives them the higher ability. You need the higher mind. You need the higher mind. 
So Uranus and Hasta would also give them the ability. So Mars combined with Uranus will give them a powerful drive to become that, to become the teachers of yoga or Tai Chi. Then comes the fifth house of education which has got Saturn in Anuradha Nakshatra. Now this one, Anuradha as it is, is ruled by Saturn and Anuradha Nakshatra being is a nakshatra of caring and nurturing, of devotion. So Saturn here is very tender. In the house of education, they will want to see all education with the lens of a touch of sensual and artistic beauty. But they'll want to bring it in the way or Saturn would bring it, like work. Now in the sixth house, Neptune in Puru Falguni, Puru Ashada, sorry, it's got buried down. So in Puru Ashada, will give them the ability to recalibrate higher knowledge which they need to bring. Neptune has to bring in higher heart, a heart-centered education which is required for Yoga Tachi Chigo. As usual in 10th house, Mercury always signifies a teacher which is in Ashwini Nakshatra. So it makes them bold, it makes them Martian driven, it makes them bold communicators. Jupiter in Purnamasu in the 12th, again there is a uh, aspect of Jupiter being exalted in the 12th house and be, it's being in the nakshatra of Purnarvasu would give them the ability to bring in higher wisdom. 12th house is of higher wisdom spirituality. Jupiter in Purnarvasu, which is governed by Jupiter, will give them that ability, natural ability. Virgo ascendant with ascendant pointing to Uttra Falguni. Uttra Falguni nakshatra. Okay. So Uttra Falguni nakshatra kind of teachers, what they would be drawn towards, they would be preachers, advisors, counselors, coaches. These are different kind of teachers. Now what kind of arrangement would make that shine? So let's see first. Um, in fourth house, you have Mercury in Mula Nakshatra. So if you want to be advise, be a counselor or coach, you need to get to the root of things, much beyond the superficial level. Mula gives you that strength. Mula is going to the roots. Okay. So to the depth of things, when Mercury sits in Mula, it wants to go really deep into the aspect and it is looking at the 10th house of career where again Jupiter is sitting. So again Jupiter, Mercury, Parivartan Yoga but now Jupiter is sitting in the 10th house in Punarvasu. This is a very very exalted, strong, good teacher. They have a natural ability in communicating, receiving higher wisdom as well. They communicate wisdom. That's what the advisors, counselors and coaches need to do. Everything that comes out in the main line of work will be wise. In the fifth house, they have Shavana Nakshatra and Neptune in Shavana Nakshatra. This again gives a higher heart wisdom in the field of education. So they'll view education with a sense of artistic touch and compassion and beauty. Saturn in the sixth house will give them the ability to work. Shravana is about work. So they will work and it's exalted. So their daily work will consist of doing something with this education. That's how they become good educators. Venus in Vrikshira in um, ninth house will give them again the ability to recalibrate or see all the education with the eyes of an artist or eyes of beauty. That's what's needed. In the 11th house, there's Uranus in Ashlesha. Now this becomes a very clever, clever person in social circles, in the broader community. So these people want individuation in the presence in the social circle. So they'll be very, very active in social media or in bigger communities. Well, if you want to coach a whole lot of people worldwide, you need to have Uranus strength present in the 11th house. That's what will draw them. The individuality wants to shine there. And in the 12th house, we have Sun in Maga again, the powerful the legacy binder, one who wants to bring in wisdom 
from the ancestors. Sun in Maga will bring wisdom from the ancestor, ancestral energy. Because 12th house is all about spirituality. The Libra Ascendant, what kind of teachers would these people make? Now the Libra Ascendant would make good coaches, counsellors and advisors to government because Librans are natural diplomats. They want to serve the society. So but in Libra, the kind of coaches, counsellors and advisors to governments would best come from Ascendant being pointed to Swati. Swati is a, a nakshatra of individuality. And with Neptune being present there, it gives them the highest heart-centric knowledge of wisdom, compassion, which is heart-based energy, not just mind-based energy, not just intellectuality, but a heart-based energy. And Swati being individualistic, they know how to bring it from their own heart, not being carried away by others. Swati is fiercely individualistic. So that's what's needed if you want to be an advisor to the government. And then in the fourth house, they have Mercury in Shana again, which is duty bound and which gives them, which is again looking at the 10th house. Mercury looks at the 10th house where Jupiter sits in Ashlesha. Again, Jupiter in Ashlesha gives a very powerful wisdom brought upon by ancestral energy. Ashlesha wants to translate it to you can roughly translate as Jupiter in Ashlesha as very clever, wise and yet clever. Then you know how to manipulate things. So advisors to government need to be clever about the other side. Counselors need to be clever. Coaches need to be clever. They need to adapt. Ability to adapt, it comes from Ashlesha. Venus in the fifth house under uh, Shravana Nakshatra gives them the ability to be unconventional. It's sitting in the house of Aquarius in the fifth house. Aquarius is unconventional, unconventional wisdom. This is what they need if they want to be coaches and counselors because you have to come up with a solution. You can't have ready-made solutions. Okay. Same thing will be on the on this side of the on the eleventh and the ninth house. You see Uranus in Mrikshira. Mrikshira is always searching for solutions. Always is a born researcher. So researcher as in mind. Now you put Uranus there in the higher mind and in the house of higher education. These people might want to do PhDs in things. Might really want to get to the depth of education itself. So that's what Uranus will bring in the higher learning. Okay. Saturn makes them do the daily work from Uttarabhadrapada and Sun in Maga gives them an a uh, a drive to achieve fame in the social circles, in social media. Moon in Hasta will give them the ability to go even abroad, have a very universal kind of approach. The hands embracing the entire world, that's the, what Moon provides in the 12th house. So when Moon sits in the 12th house, it becomes all about spiritually driven people. Okay. The Sagittarius, next we'll, let's take Sagittarius Ascendants. By, they, what kind of teachers? They make spiritual teachers, university lectures. Again, we go back to the university level, but there is spiritual teachers as well. It's hard, to, hard for me to combine both of them since both are quite different in their energies, but let's just see because this, there can be any number of combinations here. So the Ascendant should be pointing towards Mola. That's the spiritual teachers. Mula, ascendant, will want to dig deep into whatever subject they are thinking about. They make great thinkers and researchers. Spiritual teacher would want to go deep into every aspect, not superficial aspects. Mercury in Uttarabhadapada in fourth will give them the ability to communicate from an early age because fourth house stands for home. Why have I put fourth house? Because it even looks at the tenth house. Whatever you learn at home, you bring it out into the career. That's why fourth and tenth are opposite to each other. If you don't, if one doesn't have early childhood proper learning and that drive from the ascendant, things don't work out as good. They don't make good teachers. That's what we are talking about here. 
So the sun in Ashwini will give them the drive to get and it's in the fifth house. So sun is the natural significator of the fifth house which will want to bring in great wisdom from the ancestral energy. See, we, we require a lot of that in the world today. Ancestral energy wisdom. What knowledge has been lost? It has to come from the soul, not the mind. It will never come from the mind. It has to come from the ancestors as intuition, as channel. I've also put in Neptune in Bharani Nakshatra. Why? Because in the fifth house is a house of education. Bharani is a house we saw earlier of like primary school teachers. So the education should become about a refined artistic and seeing the beauty within education itself, seeing the rhythms of life. They will see this earlier on. That's how they make good spiritual teachers, even university lecturers. In the sixth house of daily work, we have Venus and Brukshira. Again, this will make them want to hunt for the wisdom in everything. It's one thing to learn with textbook knowledge and communicate it. But if you want to be a university lecturer or a spiritual teacher, you need to bring in that high heart wisdom in your daily work, six houses of daily work. In the eighth house of occult and intuition, we have Jupiter placed in Pushya. So Jupiter in Pushya will give them the ability to nurture this, bring in higher wisdom as channel. These people can even make good channelers. That's how they make good spiritual teachers. This is for the spiritual teachers. University lecturers don't require that. But spiritual teachers definitely require that kind of access of Jupiter. Okay. So, um, next we have Uranus and Swati. Uranus and Swati will again give them very high degree of individuality because Swati itself is individualistic, fiercely. And Uranus will give them the ability to bring their individuation to social circles. A spiritual teacher cannot be shrouded in a cave. He needs to be out there among people. Uranus wants that individuation. This person will be driven to be individualistic in social media, community, larger communities. We need those kind of teachers in this world today. In the 12th house, we have Saturn and Anuradha, which makes gives a gentle touch to Saturn and very spiritually oriented. Saturn is even in the Karaka of the 12th house, means it gives them wisdom from the depths of other dimensions. Saturn in 12th house will bring in true wisdom, true knowledge, and Anuradha will want to give it to the entire world. Okay? And um, Saturn is in the ninth position, Jupiter is in the ninth position. So Jupiter and Saturn kind of feed each other in this cycle. Okay. So next one for Sagittarius, even Purva Ashada will make. Now why two Sagittarian ascendants are good teachers in different ways? Because it is ruled by Guru, it is ruled by the teacher himself. So these both will make teachers, but like you saw, take a look at the previous slide. There are different kind of teachers based on how the nakshatra shift, the ascendant shifts in nakshatra. In this, we are taking Purva Ashada as nakshatra ascendant pointing towards PA, Purva Ashada. Okay? These ones will make professional motivators, inspirational teachers and writers. Okay, This is very different to a university or a spiritual teacher. These are motivators. These are all the guys who write self-help books like you can make it, you can do this or you can do that. Insp inspiring people. We need that also. Again, we have fourth house, Mercury Nutravaldapada, looking at the tenth house. So they will bring the wisdom forth into the Jupiterian energy into that. Jupiter is sitting in the ninth house of higher education which is very exalted because in order to teach in order to motivate you first need to know a lot of about the subject so jupiter in the house of maga will bring a great amount of wisdom okay to their teaching sun in ashlesha again will bring them ancestral energy we have left retained Neptune in Parani and the v Venus in Rukshira in the sixth as it is. So this we have retained from the previous slide, but we have shifted this energy slightly. 
<coughs> because Jupiter in the eleventh house makes a good motivator, makes a good writer. Okay, because they are learned people. Capricorn ascendant now Saturn being the teacher. When Saturn becomes a teacher, we first take the first instances. It's pointing towards Uttara Shadha Nakshatra, and Saturn being present in the first house. Now Saturn being present in the ascendant in the head itself will give them a lot of knowledge and wisdom, but it's a very harsh kind of teacher. The difference between Guru and Saturn is can become very harsh. Saturn, it teaches by real life experience. Guru brings in wisdom from past life, kind of. And so, therefore, we have stuck Jupiter in Mula, okay, in the twelfth house of spirituality. So, Jupiter under Mo will give them really good wisdom, and it's exalted because it is sitting in its own house. It will bring very sattvic knowledge, because this is the house of sattva and a house of uh, well, house of sattva and house of spirituality. Uranus in Jeshtha will give them individuality. Preachers, priests and counsellors have to be very individualistic. They can't be carried away by people and they have but they have to interact with a lot of people. Neptune in Swati in 10th house will give them the ability to be very heart-centered in their approach rather than mind-centered. Neptune in Hasta in the ninth house will give them higher learning, heart centric. See how much I'm telling about heart centric because we are talking about teachers who will be heart centric in the new world. Sun in Ashuni in the fourth house will shine upon the Neptune in the tenth house, so it will bring in ancestral energy and wisdom from Ashuni into the professional workplace. So shining on tenth house, this person will want will be recognized, he will have fame, recognition. They need to be recognized, they can't be hiding these people, preachers, priests and counsellors. They need to be out in the open amongst the people. Mercury in the house of Mrikshira, again Mrikshira is always hunting, it is ruled by Mercury. So Mercury in this house of Mrikshira will be constantly seeking in education. Very inquisitive person, they will want to know about n number of things. Okay, so this will make them good preachers, priests and counsellors. Next, Capricorn, again, Saturn being the teacher, Capricorn is ruled by Saturn, Ascendant now being in Shana Nakshatra. These people can make good linguists, educators and scholars. Why? Because Shana Nakshatra is all about language, is all about hearing. They are good in languages, they make natural linguists. And what is the main theme of any education, I mean any teacher? You need to be good in language. So people born under the ascendant pointing towards Shavana will make good linguists, educators and scholars. Saturn is very scholarly. And Saturn in the 10th house in Swati being very individualistic again. They, and they will want to do this as daily work. Sitting in the house of um, Libra, they will all be about other people, they will want to serve. Saturn is very exalted in this. On the other hand, Uranus sitting in uh, Shatabhisha and in the house of Aquarius in the second house. Aquarius itself is a very eccentric sign. Uranus being all about individuation, even Aquarius wants individuality. Who am I? So Uranus makes them very individualistic people right from a very early age and unconventional. Jupiter in Uttarabhadrapada in the third will make them develop skills wisely at a very early age. It's in the house of Jupiter, so it will be very exalted. They will develop, they will have very good education and skills relating to speech and communication because it's in the third house. In the fourth house, we have Neptune. Neptune looks at this Saturn sitting in 10th house. So it will provide all this wisdom which they have gained from the heart. Heart centered. Fourth house is about the heart. The heart wisdom is communicated to the Saturn who wants to work in daily life. Beautiful. Sun in Kritika in the fifth house, Kritika is ruled by Sun will tend to, uh, they'll bring legacy knowledge, 
they will want to research and study all about a language like going getting to the etymology of meanings because we are talking about linguists and educators they need to get to the root meanings of everything like the latin meaning the etymology of words etc etc so this gives them the ability in the sixth house we have venus so venus in brikshi raga and it is hunting for the heart centered focus in daily work in 11th house we have um mercury in chitra this will give them good ability to become grounded in their education okay that's the capricorn ascendant second one shana now the last one we come to the teachers of yoga meditation reiki and healing arts okay this is something similar to cancer i guess so what kind of teachers of what kind of chart do teachers of yoga meditation reiki and healing arts require well we go to the pisces ascendant the last one but now with ascendant pointing to uttarabhadrapada they again uttarabhadrapada is ruled by saturn venus being in the first house of alan in uttarabhadrapada will give them powerful ability to teach yoga meditation etc because it's they bring it from their past lives you will see a certain trend here in each one of the charts if you know a little bit about astrology and higher astrology you will know that why i am putting neptune saturn or even uranus in certain houses it being it signifies past life wisdom for example neptune in the 12th house in um, shatabhisha would require an enormous amount of unconventional wisdom maybe shamans maybe healers maybe psychic healers of the past life they're bringing that energy okay teachers of meditation reiki kind of have to have a direct access in a very unconventional means this is not mainstream this is not going to a church a temple or a mosque it's going directly to the other side and bringing the knowledge so in second house we have sun in ashwini which gives them the ability to be powerful in their speech in the communication ability in the house of education we have cancer mercury in pusha which is very nurturing energy mercury in pusha becomes all about nurturing others so they will look for the trend whenever they are getting educated in the eighth house we have put shravana okay in swati and this gives them the ability or the lower dimensional access when saturn sits in the eighth house it gives them a lot of occult innate occult knowledge they become occultist not necessarily a profession but i'm saying occultist as an occult powers they have access to lower dimensions saturn gives access to lower dimensions in eighth house jupiter gives higher dimensional access anyway so jupiter is sitting along with purva shala which is the nakshatra of jupiter exalted in the same house in ninth we makes them good teachers and uranus in mula will give them access to higher dimensions jupiter along with uh, uranus is powerful combination it gives them higher dimensional knowledge saturn in it gives them lower dimensional knowledge so it is very balanced that's what is needed for teaching med- meditation reiki and healing arts of course again there can be a number of combinations here but this is the general energies of all these ascendants now we can keep on going deep into one another but if you want to know where your child's chart is and how whether they have some teaching ability or they you find them being teachers and you want to have a check you can go to a number of websites which plot north indian style and check for n one or more of these combinations if you need to check with me just message me on my facebook page which is linked below and we can discuss whether there is a possibility or we can even check if they are good at other professions